but that's just a stepping stone to becoming a Navy SEAL. That's just not, that's not the end-all, be-all. And I found a lot of the students didn't really know why the hell they were there. Vice just being there just because they saw it online or, you know, they woke up one day and started to prepare six months or less than that for BUDS. Yeah. And, yeah, they met the standards to get there, but that's it. You yeah. Know, just because you can pass a, a SEAL PST doesn't mean you're going to make it through. And it doesn't, and honestly, when you have a week, I tell these guys, people all the time, if you have a week, why, or that trickles down in your motivation, everything, you're going to get weeded out quick. That why is not going to hold up against all the demands that, especially first phase, requires of you. Yeah. You know, that's that's going to get in and out of your mind quick. So if you're, if you don't want to be a SEAL and do the fucking job down range, what, you know, when I was there, weren't too many people still going overseas. Yeah, so, it kind of died down there. Yeah, it died bit. down right when I got back because my last point I finished in 2013. And then we're slowly kind of removing guys from Afghanistan, especially the team guys. Yeah. So barely anyone was going there when I was an instructor. So I don't think they it maybe just didn't have a clue or didn't really think about it. But, again, this is not a, a blanket statement for every student. But for the people that quit or I saw lack of performance and when I especially when I was a proctor and spoke to him it was that it kind of all boiled down to that it wasn't like oh my legs hurt I'm tired it was, it was like I was like why the hell are you even here makes sense is there <clears throat> as much as we eat our own and we do eat our own and we're probably the best out of it out of all the all the other branches uh which I don't necessarily think is a fucking good thing but at the same token, we're also extremely fucking tight knit and we have each other's back on deployment. We might not, I might not like you. I might not want to be around you, but when you're on deployment, things change and you have to have that fucking teamwork. So as an instructor, do you teach that or is that something that you think that guys come to the table with that it's just like in their heart? It comes to, I think guys show up with that. They come to the table with that kind of mentality already. That's why they're there. That's what kind of drove part of the reason why it probably drove them to the program. Mm -hmm. There's, we don't give them no PowerPoint on being a team player, teamwork. It's just, it's driven into them like right away. Even before they even phase up to first phase, it's like you're in boat crews, you're in a class, you're part of a team, you're part of a unit. You need to work together. Otherwise, you're going to fail, you know, so that the program does it in, inherently and then we're there to reinforce it and make yeah. sure that that standard is held. When you have guys that show up that aren't team players and a lot of times these are your division one types, division one athletes, Olympic athletes, sometimes it's guys from other branches that are just crushing the fucking runs, crushing the swims. They're the top performers. But, and then they want to gloat and they want to be fucking praised for how well they're performing. But they're not a team player. How do you, is it hard to get those guys to quit? Do you try to get them to quit? I've always seen them, um, it kind of, just like you said, the program kind of takes care of its, takes care. Yeah, you know, takes care of itself. How do how do those guys wind up washing out? I think the majority they, they do wash out. Um, the program will expose them, and then so will the class. To be honest with you, because they see right through that shit, and they're not. And even the class leaders and the Boker leaders, they may be in charge, may not be. You know, even they may be just a lower ranking, but a D one athlete or something, or maybe an officer. Uh, but even still they're going to get exposed and they'll be oust by the by the class pretty quickly. When I see when I was an instructor, we touched on it, that social pressure. Um, and if you're not a part of the team, you're going to be quickly cut out of the team. Yeah. Cause that, and that happens quick too. And then w instructors will kind of help reinforce that as well. We help, they? we help, hey, what's up with this guy? You know, are you guys going to do something about it? talk to the class leader, maybe he's a boat crew leader, or maybe he's an officer. We talked to the class OIC to talk to him. So there's ways to expose that. 
if we see, because maybe he'd be crushed and passing every test, but again, he's standing out because he's not being a part of the team. He thinks he's above the rest. Those things you could see quickly in buds. Those okay. little discrep- those discrepancies in people. Even as an instructor? Yeah. Do you it think you out. see it faster as an instructor as you do as a student? I, this class would, pro- would see it before us. Okay. Yeah, the, the, his own boat crew would definitely see it before us. Because in those, those occasions, that, those arrogance, um, that entitlement, you know, may not show because he could be passing tests. He could be passing all the runs, the swims. So he could kind of slip by a little bit because he's performing. Uh, just on a performance standard. But as soon as we start doing team evolutions, the boats, the logs, rock port, surf passes, etc., that's when people like that start showing. Okay. Because he's not putting out. He's just in the same position all the time. He's not moving, holding his weight. He's not shifting. Like for the boats, boats on heads, like number two spot, which is directly in the middle of the boat, the heaviest spot where all the water goes, kind of rests in the center, and it bows too, so all the weight kind of centers in the boat. He'll never go to that position, or if he's on the logs, he'll never go to the end of the log where mm. all the weight lies. Everyone tries, all the turds or the people who don't want to put out, don't want to be part of the team, go to the center where they could pretend like they're carrying something Yeah. because everyone else in the end is carrying the weight. So there's, they know, they find out these little tricks that we know of. The instructors see this, we see it all the time. And we pick up on it because this, we see the same faces. And the class will see it too, but we notice the same exact faces at the same spot every time. Yeah. How do you deal with that as an instructor? Do you, do you give them like a little extra? Give them extra attention. Extra benefit? Oh, yeah. To entice them to ring the bell? We'll give or? them some extra motivation. Yeah. We'll How definitely, would you do that? If we notice something during the evolution, we'll shift them to the spot where we think it's the toughest. Would like you humiliate logs. him in front of the entire class? Humiliate him, no. No? Not humiliate. Okay. We would tell him if he was doing what I just described, we would tell him to go back to the position, to the two spot or the end of the log and stay there. Okay. And you're going to stay there until you either quit or you start putting out for your boat crew. Um, more often than not, they tend to fall out yeah. or start collapsing their whole entire boat crew because they're not holding their weight and everyone else starts carrying more load, more tired. It's just like a snowball effect. Everyone yeah. starts dying off. So I, I've, always, always, I've always been, like, really curious about, like, you get these guys sometimes, I, and I never was, you know, an instructor, so this is why I'm so curious, is you get these guys that they just can't fucking hang, they don't put out, the boat crew is basically, um, you know, carrying them through, Hell Week, especially, and nobody seems to be able to force these fuckers to quit, and but they do wind up disappearing. So, if you got a guy and you're an instructor who he's not cutting it, his boat crew's suffering, he's not a team player, he's hanging on by a thread because he just won't ring the fucking bell. Like, how how does he like how do we get disappear? Rid of him? We it's pretty easily actually for we just write them up performance wise. You just performance drop performance them right there. Performance drop them. No shit. He's over a series of evolutions, mm-hmm. not just one time, yeah. but over a series of evolutions over a couple of days, maybe a week, of just not performing or hacking it after being warned. Done, and we just pull them from the class. Okay. Sometimes people do squeak by though. That being said. You know, but yeah, performance drop. Okay, would be the way to get we get rid of these guys. I have another question too. I've never actually met a buds quitter. I don't know if you have this too, but everybody seems to get oh yeah medical dropped. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've I've met a ton of buds quitters, but nobody ever admits it. They right. always say, "Oh, I've been med dropped." And I know when I was going through buds, they would actually give. Um, they would give them a choice like, well, you know, would you like to be med dropped? And mm-hmm. uh, is, that, is that how that goes? You just tell them, ah, oh, yeah, you don't have to ring it. Just No. Okay. 
nope. If a student clearly just wants to DOR or drop drop on request, he has to ring the bell. Oh, good. Cut and dry. But if it's for a medical, it's the only reason he's going to get med dropped if it's for a severe medical issue. I'm talking severe. Because right now, they, at least when I was there, my experience has a very good medical system there. And they'll rehab you up. Yeah. They will rehab the student back to full health and put him back in the class. If he injured stress fractures or whatever that was like kind of induced because of the training, they'll rehab you up and get you back in the class. Um, if your performance dropped, your performance dropped. It's not like, hey, do you want just to write down a med drop? Yeah. But you really got performance dropped? Or okay. you DOR and we just wrote down you got med dropped? No way. Yeah. You quit, you quit. I think it, and I've come across that to myself. They're lying. They're just uh, just straight up just they don't want to admit to themselves or others that they just quit. Just a flat out liar. Just flat out liar. And I have met a couple guys where they approach me like, no, I quit, or they just straight up. And those are far few in between. But I respect that more than, yeah. You know, I don't hold it against them. I don't give a shit. But it's not for everyone. Yeah, it's not for everyone. But if yeah, if you're straight up, that those people who do that are just straight liars. So they're lying to themselves, but because we don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I've met a ton of med yeah. drops. I've never met a quitter. Yeah, so yeah, same here. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Let's dive into the infamous Hell Week. You went through it. I went through it. When you go back as an instructor and you see what these guys are going through in Hell Week, and and you've already done it. I mean, does it does it look as bad as when you were going through it? Does it look worse? Does it look the same? I, I don't know. As an instructor, it's like that behind the curtain look. Yeah. But it definitely looks worse as a student. Does it? Yeah. As an instructor, it's not that bad. Um, but it's by no means has it changed. It's, it's tough as hell. Uh, but I don't know. When I look, I could hardly remember. When I look back, think back at my hell week, yeah. I could hardly remember some evolutions. Yeah, did, as an instructor, I mean, I can remember it because I used to work with tons of them, but working them as an instructor, so I remember everything. Would you say that was your favorite evolution to work as an instructor? Uh, camp surf. Camp surf? Oh, camp surf, yeah. We call it camp surf. It's like Wednesday night. So midweek, kind of Wednesday night, dudes made it because that following day is like messing around, then you're doing the round the world till you're done. But camp surf's like middle of night, by the old course, build this huge fire pit and then huge pit right next to it where all the students lie. And it's like we make a little stage and they tell us jokes and their jokes shit. We send them to the surf zone, laugh at them. And if they're good, let them go stand by the fire for a couple minutes, warm them up. And then kind of the whole class will go through it and then we'll punish them. Occasionally we had a tradition where we brought them food. Punish them how? If they've fallen asleep. Mm-hmm. We fucking wake them all up, send them to the surf middle of the night, surf hit after surf hit after surf hit. That's the worst thing in Hell Week. Yeah. We would just do hundreds of hit the surf, hit the surf, hit the surf. I mean, these guys are just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that water is freezing ass. How Freezing ass in the middle of the night. What's the temp? 50s. 50s? Mid, yeah. Mid-50s at night. Summertime, it's a little bit warmer. I would say six, in the like low 60s to mid-60s, even then. Whether it's summer, winter, doesn't matter because we just keep you in the water longer. And trust me, you're going to freeze just as much if you froze in the wintertime, even in the summer. Yeah. You know, like, you watch Discovery, you watch, you know, all the, the Hollywood class and the documentaries and you read the books and now they see all the pictures on um, social media and stuff. But these guys watching Discovery Channel, they they see... They see guys rolling around in the surf and carrying logs and carrying boats, but what they don't what they don't see is is the shit that you can't see that you know as an instructor and and you find out real fast as a student like the chafing from the sand and in your armpits on your groin and your junk and uh you know from the sand rubbing back and forth and that dries. And I feel like the instructors know it dries, and that's camis are like stuck to the side of your sack. And as soon as the class is dry, it's like, hey, we're going to go for a run. As soon as you run, those pants are crusted to that chafing, and it rips the skin right up. 